Yo guys, what's up? It's Tim here, back with another melodic math tutorial. I've taken your feedback on the comments. I've hopefully improved the volume consistency between the microphone and the music. And I'm going to give a little heads up of what we're learning today. Uh, so I'm going to go dive into the, something called melodic movement. And this is how each note, uh, well, the relationship between each note and how it moves up and down in pitch within the motif itself. I've also used this time some examples from some popular songs because that was requested. Um, I think it makes more sense than me just looking at Deep House tracks. Um, so yeah, I've, here I've got um, Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. Uh, I've just got the meaning notes here. Obviously, if you, you'll recognize it. If you don't, just go on YouTube and you're pretty, pretty sure you would have heard of it. Anyway, let's check this out. So then, uh, let's have a little recap from the last episode. Oh, and if you haven't seen the previous episode, the introduction to melodic math, um, go check it out on my page. I'll put a link in the bio. So if we look here, um, I've got the MIDI notes drawn out, as you just heard, and um, I folded the notes here. So we're only looking at the notes in the scale, and the scale of this particular riff is in G Figian, which is a variation of the minor scale. It's actually a mode. You can check more of that out, or maybe I'll do a video on it one day. So yeah, um, that's the mode we're in, G Figian. And now, like in the last lesson, uh, I've taken a screenshot here and I've applied some graphics to help you understand it. So this is just a recap from the last episode. We were talking about the rhythm and the melodic structure. So we've got A, B, A, C, A, B, A, C. And A plus B plus A plus C equals 32. So it fits the space of two bars perfectly, which gives it its balance. Um, as you can see, A is 4, 4, B is 6, and a C is a 2 and an 8. Um, and that gives it its length of note. So then, what's new? Well, we're going to talk about melodic movement, which is the relationship between two notes or three notes in a motive and how they jump to one another. So if we go to the next slide, we see this. Um, and as we can see, in the first motive, the A motive, the red one, we can see I've written an I've drawn an arrow and I've put E2 as it, it goes up two intervals in the scale. Um, so it goes from D to F. Uh, remember from earlier I said it's the notes are folded here. So this isn't just two notes up the piano roll. This is two notes up the scale, the G Figian scale. So we say E2 because that means to elevate by two intervals. If I was to say E1, I would be elevating by one interval. If I was to say E4, I'd be elevating by four intervals. Uh, and then you can see here on the yellow one, which is the C motive, um, is an F1, which means to fall. To fall one interval in this case, if I was to put uh, F3, I'd be falling by three intervals of the scale. And finally, there's an N here, which represents no movement, simply because there's only one note in this motive. It's just by itself. But if there was two notes and you put an N, it would just mean there is no movement in pitch. Uh, you do not go up or down, you stay on the same. So if there was two notes here and I had, we had an N movement, it would just be G and G again. Now, I want you to pay attention to these A motives here. As you can see, the first three all elevate by two, but the final one falls by two. Now, we can say that this motive always has an interval movement of two. It always moves by two, rather it be up or down, or wherever it might start from. So now if we move to the next slide, it will uh, all be explained what all this does. Right then, so as you can see on this graph, I've added some Roman numerals, which is completely new from the last video. Um, so as you can see, the, the A motive here is four, then there's the Roman numeral value of two, and then another four. So like before, the four still represents the space of four sixteenth notes. So you can see this is the space of four sixteenth notes or a quarter note. And then there's the value of two here in Roman numerals, which means we are moving in a melodic movement of two intervals to the scale from D to F. So we're moving up two intervals of the scale. And then the four represents the space of four sixteenth notes again. So the four represents the space of the note and the Roman numerals represent the interval change the, of going up or down the scale. And on the B here, we see six. So six represents the space of six sixteenth notes, which gives it that size. And the N represents no movement as in, well, there's no other notes to move to, so no movement. 
And then on the C, as you can see, the two, the two represents um, two sixteenth notes or an eighth note. Um, and then there's the interval movement of one, as in moves one interval down the scale. And then there's an eight, which represents the space of eight sixteenth notes or half a bar in this case. Cool, cool, cool. So let's look at something a bit more complex now. Um, here's another really popular tune by Europe. It's called The Final Countdown. I'm sure you would have heard it. It's a brilliant tune. Uh, so let's give this a whirl and see what we can hear. Cool, cool, cool. Um, in case you're wondering, you can hear the chords also behind it. I've got it layered here. The chords are not going to be import important to the, the lesson here today, but I just wanted them there so you could uh, get a feel for the song and stuff like that. So yeah, anyway, back to the melody here. As you can see, there is four phrases here, um, starting with a silent note here, and then we have the A and then the B. And again, silent, A, B, silent, A, B, silent, A, B. Cool. So I've gone ahead and made a screenshot. Let's zoom in a little bit. And this one's a bit more complex, so let me go through it and I'll explain it very slowly and hopefully you'll get it. Um, so let's start with the S down here, which represents the silence, and it takes up the space of six. You could also say that the S is another variation of A because it takes up the same amount of space, which is six. Um, but in this case, I thought it to be easier just to express S as silence. So then we move up to the first A, and you can see it's a, a space of 1 16th, 1 16th, and then a 4 16th, which is a quarter note. And you can see I've put these Roman numerals in between the notes to say there is an interval jump of 1. So 1, which represents this note here, an interval jump of 1, which goes down, which then represents the 1 here, and then an interval jump of 1 back up, which represents the 4 here. Uh, and next on this B, we see it is the space of four and it has no movement. That's why there's an N, just four N, done. And then A2 here, um, it's a slight variation of A. It takes up the same space and has pretty much almost exactly the same um, sequence as the first A, but we see that the four is split into two here, but the interval movement is still one. So you got the one, an interval movement of one, and another one, an interval movement of one, and then you're back on the R2 now, and then an interval movement of one, and then back down to a two. And then the B is exactly the same here again, where it is a space of four sixteenth notes and no movement. And then again, you see silence, which takes up the space of six. And then the A here is exactly the same as the first A, except we're on a different contour, uh, which I explained in my last video, we just moved a semitone up. So it's slightly different, but it's, a, it's the exact same pattern, the exact same rhythmic pattern. And again, the B here, exact same thing, but it's on a different note, just the exact same uh, sequence though. And again, the silence. And then we have A2 again, which is again, the same as this A2, but it's just on a different key this time, but the sequence is exactly the same. It's a 16th note, movement down, 16th note, movement up, eighth note, movement down, eighth note, simple. And then the final B is actually a very slight variation. I think in music theory, they call this like a pickup note where it gets a bit faster and you feel something called rhythmic acceleration before the phrase resets and it kind of feels like a pickup, it picks up the pace. That's why they call it a pickup note or a pickup motive. And as you can see, the B2 represents a space of two sixteenths or an eighth note, eighth note here. And then the Roman numeral represents, oh, I apologize, actually that should, um, that should be two Roman numerals there. That should represent the value of two because we're moving up two spaces here. Cool, so hopefully that all makes sense. So let's get down to doing a demonstration. Um, I've gone ahead and actually already made one just so we could get through the video a bit quicker. Um, so this is what I came up with. Um, my A is the space of four. There is an N as in there's no movement. So it just goes to the same note again, and it's also the same size. I like doing this with my A's because I feel like that gives it the stability and really like gives it the punch, like a doon, doon, you know, so it just stays in place at the start. 
Uh, and then we move up to a B motive, which is a bit more wild. So we have a two, and then an interval change of one, and then a two, then an interval change of one, then a two, then an interval change of one, then another two, then an interval change of one, and finally another two, which gives this space of um, 10 spaces, 10 16th notes. I've also made it even spicier and added in uh, a C, and the C uh, is a space of a 16th note. There's uh, two interval movements, another 16th note, uh, an interval movement of one, and then the space of an eighth note or two 16th notes. And then I've said silence equals 10. Uh, and silence, the silence here still equals the same length as B, um, but I've just put it in as a separate key just so it's a bit easier to understand. Um, and then I've come up with a structure here, which is pretty much the first three are exactly the same. And then the fourth one just has the last C turned off. And that's why it's a lowercase. Um, so now if we look at the MIDI notes here, if you haven't already had a little peek, um, you can see that I've drawn it all out already. And I've come up with my own little ideas and stuff like that. So I put it in the scale of A minor, and that's why you're only seeing the white notes here. I think A minor is pretty good to go for because it's all the white notes and it's easy to follow. So let's start off with the A. So we've got two four notes to go off what my first. So we set this to 16th, and we can see this is the space of four 16th notes. Therefore, put that in. And then according to the sequence, we want to have another uh, quarter note or four sixteenth notes, but we don't want any key change. We want to not move up or down. So we just pick the A again. Now we're in a new sequence with a two. So this can start wherever you want. I've picked the C. And then from the C, um, I we have an interval movement of one. So I've moved up one, the scale to the D. And then again, I have an interval movement of one and I have picked the E. And then another interval movement of one, pick the F, and the, another final interval, interval movement of one, back down to the E. So as you can see, uh, I've not broken the sequence throughout the whole eight bar, but um, I've made variations, as you can see, and I'll explain in a second. So this silence here next, which is a space of 10. So I've just put in uh, a ghost note, which is the length of 10 16th notes. And then finally, we have the C, which is the space of one 16th note another 16th note, and then an 8th note. The interval movement is a bit different. It's a 2, then it's a 1. As you can see, this is two movements and then one movement. And then basically all I've done is then duplicated this and then made variations to it without falling away from the sequence. And this creates a very, very, very strong repetition because the, your brain will be like, oh, it's the same pattern. It's just rearranged and your brain deciphers that without you even knowing it. And that's what makes music so hypnotic. So anyway, brilliant. So we've put this in. Let's have a little listen to it. Worth mentioning, if you're wondering why this C's turned off, if you haven't realized already, it's because in the sequence I said that this lowercase c represents the same motive C, but it's just turned off in this case, and I feel like that gives the space to just close the 8 bar off. Anyway, I hope you like my melody. I think it's um, pretty nifty. It's not the best, obviously, but uh, it's quite cool. Anyway, if you enjoy this video and you feel like you learned, please like, share, comment, and leave. if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments, and I'll try and answer them. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to talk about melodic growth and decay, which will help you have a feel of expansion in your melodies and really push it to an euphoric level, uh, which was pretty fucking cool if I do say so myself. Anyway, catch you guys soon.